When was uh, Dangerous Goods formed and how has it changed over the years, if it's changed? Uh, Dangerous Goods was formed in 2002. We're a compilation of a bunch of crews, uh, dance crews from the 90s where all of our crews kind of died out. And we formed Dangerous Goods uh, when we went to battle in the West Coast in Calgary. So 2002 is when we started. Wow. And has it changed much uh, or how has it changed over the years? Um, uh, with the crew, obviously, we get older, you know, like I, I sometimes say the lifespan of a, of a break, breaker is maybe you start uh, losing, losing interest around 25 years old, you know, so, but uh, our crew, because we've competed a lot more nationally, we, we kind of uh, focused our energy way into our mid-30s and things like that, so, but uh, as of right now, like I, we've been around, it's our 20 year anniversary this year and uh, you know, we're just enjoying life. We, we, we dance just for, for exercise and just for, for just the love of the art now, you know, like the competition days are, are way behind us, but we all still love doing it. Okay. Um, what are some highs over the years that you'd say some real, real ultra highs? For the crew? Yeah. Um, some highs for Dangerous Goods was, you know, like getting to travel together. I think a lot of it was just being like a family and just traveling together and just winging it. You know, we're, we're like young and we just wanted to kind of like, like uh, explore and just show that Winnipeg had talent, you know, like we're such a small city compared to like Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, right? So we just wanted to show our Winnipeg style, but also like uh, built that family along the years and I think like some of the highs was just winning together, losing together, training together, arguing together, all of that stuff that family goes through uh, and you know like just the ultimate like we are just family now to, to each other so so yeah a lot of, a lot of great times with the crew. Cool and I'll ask too um, if there even are, what were some of the lows and what did you learn from the lows if there were any? I think um, some of the lows were Sometimes we're not on the same page. The, the crew members, some of us were really competitive. Some of us just wanted to dance for the sake of dancing. Um, so like in the earlier days when we were very competitive, like some of them weren't as like into the whole competitive spirit as, as the rest of us. Because we did have the potential to be, to be amazing, like world, world renowned. So, those, and then that, that causes some arguments, frictions, you know, and especially when you start like mixing business with your art form. Like I think that, uh, that uh, like when you start doing gigs and you just, we had to pick certain members, like who's training, who's not, and some people felt some type of ways and other things like that. So that's some, that's some, that were some of the challenges over the years. And then uh, ultimately when, as we're all getting older and we just, uh, our bodies didn't move as they used to and uh, right. when, when, when people just like, oh, I can't, I can't compete, I can't break as much, you know, and life, life happens. So I wouldn't consider that a low. I, I, I would just consider that an evolution and us kind of just really finding ourselves. We've dedicated so many years, like all of us, like 20 plus years into this art form. And sometimes you wake up and it's like, oh man, I'm not 20 years old anymore. I really got to figure it out. Exactly. So, so yeah, no, it's, a, it's an amazing evolution. Um, and I, I love them all to pieces, like to this day. And, we're all coming back to, to hang out. Excellent. Uh, and like, yeah, you did mention to me once a few years ago, uh, what, like, what does, what does breakdancing do to the body? Like, what, what can it do to the body, even a young body? Yeah, I think breakers, because we, we, breakdancers or breakers, like, we, we train on, a, on an athletic level, like, Olympic level, like, we're doing flares, we're doing as much as any type of Olympian would do. The difference is, we don't take care of our bodies. <laughs> we don't stretch, like, we just do a little, okay, let's go, and then you just like, throw your body on the ground, right? So like, I think it, it's, it's a lot of wear and tear over the years, if, you've not, if your body's not uh, getting accustomed to that type of style of dance. So it is a wear and tear, you really gotta take care of your bodies. I think it's evolved these days where, they're, they have personal trainers, they're going to the gym, they're doing CrossFit, they're doing all the training, all the necessities to compete on an athletic level as it's going into the Olympics. And now competitions are so huge, like in these days, like you have to train like an athlete. I think it was a bit more raw in my, in my era where it's just like, you know, just break on, on the concrete, it's hardcore, you know, I'm bleeding, scars, I've, I've sprained all different like 
knees and fingers and all that stuff. So, so that's 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 been a challenge. So, but I'm I'm lucky to be healthy still to this day. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> uh, what uh, what is uh, what? Is there like kind of a was there an ongoing relationship with the graffiti gallery and with the dangerous goods or yeah like you know like I got introduced to to the graffiti gallery uh, through one of my crew members Dark Mark he used to work here long way before me um, when they used to do a hip hop studio here a long time ago and then I got uh, in around 2008 I started to work here part time as like an office uh, office admin uh, and I just like I was first time I came into this space even just like coming for events and stuff, super, super amazing space, such a raw, raw vibe, can't find that anywhere in Canada, and, uh, you know, I, I loved it, I love the vibe here so much, I was like, I have to work here, I gotta find a way to get involved, so Graffiti, has, graffiti Gallery has been a huge, huge, like, influence on my life, the people, like Pat and Steve especially, they're my brother, my father figures for so many years, and they've taught me so much, and I've really wanted to introduce the rest of the dance community to this space and that's why when I was working at the gallery I tried so much to hold events here and really show them like like yo we, we have a dope dope scene here in Winnipeg and I wanted to cultivate that so I owe it, I owe so much to the graffiti gallery in terms of my growth and helping helping out grow the dance scene here and, and, and the hip hop scene too as well you know I give so much props to everybody at the graffiti gallery perfect all right uh Making sure that's in focus. It is good. Um, last question is: uh, What are the future plans uh, for the dangerous goods? For dangerous goods, future plans for dangerous goods. Uh, I would say, you know, we're just chilling. You know, like uh, like as a crew, we're more just like family now. We love to like hang out and get together. We we live across the country. We have members uh, that moved here, lived here originally in Winnipeg. Now they're in Vancouver, Calgary, Saskatoon, Toronto, Winnipeg. And uh, you know, like we, whenever we can, we're in whenever in the same city. We just love to hang out and stuff. We we, we do kick a session in one two thing. Yeah. You know, we've solidified our pos, our kind of position and influence in Winnipeg and in Canada, and our uh, solidified our legacy. And we're happy with that. But I, I, like as of right now, we're just more focused on like our personal growth at this yeah. point. I'm still a little bit more involved in the dance scene, uh, with uh, being involved with the Red Bull BC One and working at Unity Charity in Toronto too as well. So I I try and. I've, tried, I've found a way to kind of find that balance between my, my passion and, and my career, you know. So the door is always open for DGC to like, if they want to still continue doing this. But everybody just kind of chilling and just like staying healthy and um, exploring, the, exploring the world. Right. Well, I'll throw this extra question quickly. Uh, advice to young uh, breakers. Advice to young breakers. A stretch because shit's gonna hurt <laughs> like later on in the world, in life, but you know like uh, it's it's a lot of hard work and you know like uh, sometimes you might get might not get it in the first try like a move or something like that and don't let that discourage you like uh, you're gonna learn a lot of discipline a lot of grit through this dance you know and you're gonna and if you find the right people to train with and be around you're gonna find a great family and. And uh, you know, like it, once you understand this dance and the culture behind it, like it's such a beautiful thing to experience. And I wish everybody to just kind of like train and explore and support, support the community, support other dance scenes too as well. Once you once you get the hang of it, you know. So, so yeah, and stretch. <laughs>